We've been doing a lot. We've had a lot of interactions with uh, with dignitaries from India. We just had the Dalai Lama here a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to have Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, who is a, a very prominent guru who has many, many millions of followers here, and we're talking about Indian issues in particular of late. Um, Sadanand Dume is our, our resident scholar in Indian studies, and he's, he has a question uh, about that country. Um, I can hold this. Um, thank you very much. Um, I have a broad question about India. When you look at your engagement with the country, what do you think it's done well, and where do you think it needs to do the most work? Well, India has a lot of very socialistic policies having to do with labor and land and it, the fact that it has not risen as a manufacturing power is an indictment of, of its government policies. That is, as China's incomes went up, the place that the world should have moved to next as the manufacturing hub of the world absolutely should be India. And that's only happening to a very, very tiny extent. And it has to do with you know, regulatory complexities, infrastructure quality. Uh, now, you know, I'm optimistic about India. Uh, we put more into India than any country in the world. Um, India benefits from a funny form of competition, which is competition between the states. And so, you know, when one state really gets its act together, the other states tend to feel jealous and they, you know, are kind of looking at what policies led to that. The states in the north that we're particularly focused on, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, have lagged uh, in every human development uh, numbers as well as income. But the improvements, and we have a, a big partnership with Nitish Kumar, as chief minister in Bihar, uh, the new chief minister in Uttar Pradesh, uh, decided that these health things that we care about, he'd get very involved with. And so we're seeing a very fast rate of improvement there. Uh, vaccination coverage, and we got polio. The last polio case there was three years ago, which is an amazing triumph. We've taken the polio quality audit group and we've turned it into a primary health care audit group that's looking at where, where do workers not show up, where does supply chain not work, why don't people go... Uh, India's health is very complicated because they have a lot of these, uh, a private sector that's very low quality, and the government hasn't figured out how to get the private sector to be high quality, and yet they haven't built the capacity in the public sector. But, you know, things, time is um, on our side in India. It's just frustrating, you know, they haven't adopted a few new vaccines that between, there's two new vaccines that will save over 400,000 lives uh, per year in just India alone, and they're being quite slow on that uh, that issue. So India's great, um, and in 15 years, you know, we'll probably be out of India uh, because its budget will get bigger and it'll allocate more of it to health. Why did the what 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 result the delays and actually the permitting and what did that what owes to that? I mean, the, I suppose the, the virus has been unionized there. But. The suspicion of, well, they, they, the bureaucrats really like the status quo. The way the career system works, you're much better off not to change things. And so getting somebody to say, yes, we'd like to spend more money on a new vaccine, knowing that there's a crowd that's going to come in and attack that, there's a little bit of conservatism. Um, and there's an election coming up, hopefully. Uh, you know, the, as you get close to an election, you get particular uh, paralysis in the bureaucracy. Post the election, there's a lot of optimism that things will, uh, both in terms of deregulation and taking on new health initiatives, that, that things will be even more aggressive.